You know what really overcooks my pasta? When groups of seemingly very smart people in positions of power in the tech world build this really cool technology, then when it's finally time to bring it to market, come up with naming schemes for it that make no sense. The worst. And yes, that's right. I am looking at you, USB forum. And for you guys specifically, what really confuses me is that you went over to the dark side after a long history of making things actually pretty simple and straightforward. So we started out with USB 1, then we got 1.1, which was a minor revision to 1. Cool. Then we got USB 2.0, which was much faster. Then we got USB 3.0, which was much faster again. So then it wasn't until around 2013 that things started getting a little weird. You see, the original USB 3.0 spec had a max theoretical speed of 5 gigabits per second. So you would think that the next revision, which doubled that speed to 10 gigabit, would be USB 4.0, right? Wrong. Instead, what we got was USB 3.1. But honestly, I was even okay with that. I mean, one is clearly a larger number than zero, and I guess it wasn't a fundamental redesign of the spec or anything. No, no, no. The issue is that at the same time, they also renamed the original USB 3.0 spec as USB 3.1 Gen 1, then called the new 10 gigabit spec USB 3.1 Gen 2. I mean, how do you just rename something after the fact? Do you, are you shampoo? Do you think that makes it seem new and cool? Now, now improved, but it's the old one, but you're also releasing a new one that is improved. Why? And in fairness, yeah, it's been done before, but still, then making matters worse, we've just gotten another doubling in speed to 20 gigabits per second. Why am I mad? I mean, extra speed's a good thing, right? The reason is that the USB forum has given us an even worse nonsensical naming twist. So bear with me here. The original USB 3.0 5 gigabit spec is now USB 3.2 Gen 1, with the 10 gigabit version becoming USB 3.2 Gen 2, which Okay, so by this moon logic then, the 20 gigabit variation would be USB 3.2 Gen 3, right? No, because the USB 3.2 spec just involves adding more lanes to the connection. So the 20 gigabit version is USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2, with the by 2 indicating that there are two data lanes instead of just one. The USB, so the USB forum, whose marketing department clearly isn't much better at naming things than the engineers, has then gone and recommended the names Super Speed, Super Speed USB 10 gigabit per second, and Super Speed USB 20 gigabit per second to differentiate the products on store shelves. Now, to be fair to the USB forum, the method behind their madness seems to be to have the naming scheme reflect how many lanes can be used in each revision. And I do get that when they transitioned from USB 2.0 to 3.0, part of the rationale for a, a big number change was that there were physical differences with the connectors, which is not the case for the various USB 3 revisions. The problem though, is that gen is generation. It means time. You can't just rename a generation, a later generation. That's not how it works. My, my great grandpa doesn't become my dad later. Furthermore, USB 3.0 was backwards compatible with USB 2.0 connectors anyway. And more importantly than all of this is that consumers don't care about things like the configuration of data lanes and exactly how the pins and the traces on their motherboard are laid out. They just want to know if, if the gadget they're buying is going to work with their gear and how fast it's going to be. I mean, PCI Express has this sort of thing figured out. 
Now, to be clear, there are some very complicated sub-elements of the PCIe specification, like, like hot plug support, that are optional on certain revisions and then required on others, etc., etc., etc. But from a consumer standpoint, when there's a speed boost, the version number goes up by one, and that's basically it. And even though the various revisions of PCI Express are all backwards and forwards compatible with each other, the folks in charge haven't felt the need to mess around with silly rebranding to make the point that it all works together. It's all called PCI Express. It's all called USB. Ta-da. But alas, this is the system we have. So if you're going to be in the market for a USB gadget anytime soon, I would recommend paying really close attention to this chart that we created for your convenience, or better yet, print it out and keep a copy in your wallet like I do, so that you too can be the life of the party whenever the subject changes to something lame, like this. All right, so that's it. If you'll excuse me now, I need to go have a word with Intel about how they decide on names for their processors as well. Be right back. And I'm back. Ah, no matter what your routine is, our sponsor for today's episode, Dollar Shave Club, has everything you need to look, feel, and even smell your best. They've got shower products, they've got oral care products, they've got hair products, skin products, butt wipe products, and obviously, shaving products. And they deliver them straight to your door. Basically, if you have a body, they've got you covered. And right now, they've got a great offer where you can get their shave, shower, or oral starter set each for only five bucks. The shave starter set comes with the executive razor and a three ounce tube of their Dr. Carver shave butter. The oral starter set comes with their weighty toothbrush and a trial size version of their toothpaste. And the shower starter set comes with three trial size versions of their amber lavender body cleanser, citrus and Hawaiian ginger face cleanser, and sage and black pepper shampoo. So join the club with one of their starter sets for just five bucks. And then after that, the restock box ships regular size products at regular price. Head over to dollarshaveclub.com slash techquickie to join today. We're gonna have that linked below. So thanks for watching guys, like, dislike, check out our other videos, comment with video suggestions, uh, especially if you have a suggestion for another rant you'd like to see, and don't forget to subscribe and follow so you don't miss out on your suggestion. Like how counterproductive would that be? You've invested all this time in writing a YouTube comment, and then you might never see the fruit of your labor.